Welcome to Every Way Woman. I'm Jasmine Loye, and this is the show where, well, we have different opinions, but always great conversation. Ladies, welcome. So we're celebrating Breast Cancer Awareness Month. I just read a really interesting article about a 29-year-old woman who had a preemptive double mastectomy. Let's have an open dialogue about this. Well, she's Look, a very brave woman to begin with. Extremely. 29 years old, to do something like that is extremely brave. Yeah, and the reason why she didn't want the reconstructive surgery, she said, is because she wouldn't be able to pick up her daughter or her child because you weren't supposed to pick up more than a gallon of milk right. for a number of months so she wanted to be able to spend that time with her child so yeah I think she's very brave and I think it's really mm -hmm. amazing that she was able to not have reconstructive surgery. I found her story to be interesting because from a young age she was dealing with this. You often think mm -hmm. of it as a mature age person's disease, but from a young age, from the sixth grade, her mother had breast cancer, her aunt died from breast cancer, and her mother had the gene. So she knew from a young girl that this was something that was going to plague her. And I really applaud her for taking those steps. You know, and I, I think the thing is, um, she was saying that, you know, she had never really, she did have bigger breasts before, um, but she always felt like, you know, as a runner, she would have to wear double, double sports bras and mm -hmm. um, always found that of a challenge. But then, you know, for her to be able to disconnect yeah. herself, um, not disconnect, but just to be able to own herself and say, you know, my breasts don't make me a woman. You know, the fact that I have a husband who loves me, who didn't care that if I don't have breasts or not, I have a, a child that I want to love and care for, that meant more to me than my breasts. I wonder how many of you, how yeah. many of us could have made that decision? I was going to say, because I think that's easier said than done. Absolutely. Because, mm -hmm. you know, as a society, women, we're kind of known by our breasts. You know, women have big tatas, you know what I mean? Like, hi! Yeah. Right, but I, I think that that's easier said than Absolutely. done because, and then she just got married too, right? But right, she said right. her husband said, I'm so okay with that. And I think the support system was key. I think yeah, it's mom. important that she said it was the smartest decision she ever made. And I think for her husband to back that up was extremely important too. When you have the support of a family as well as your doctors and everybody comes together, I think that's really crucial. Well, I'm wondering how many women are making these decisions based out of fear though to have these preemptive surgeries just like, because they're right. scared they're going to get well, cancer. Right. Your chance doubles if you right. have a, a sister, a mother, or a child yeah, with breast cancer. Yeah, almost 80 percent. So, so that's there, quite a and bit. And there were like, I think there were 40,000 women who died in 2011. Right. So, you know, it's a, it's a big killer of women. And, and it was so you want to be careful and you want to be checked and you want to make sure, right. especially right. if it runs in your that family. That her mother carried the gene. See, that's, I think she had a right. step above it. It was a known fact that her mother carried the gene. Mm -hmm. So, you know, she was, and she was tested. So, yeah. right. I mean, yes. And it's when it's in the family like that I think you really have to stay aware of what's going mm -hmm. on and 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 is do a self-exam be very you know vigilant about your own health care now when you say in the family is it in any of your families um, no. no I mean I had you know my adoptive family my mom's sister did mm -hmm. have a mastectomy um, when she was you know at some mm -hmm. point in her life but in my birth family I don't have mm -hmm. it and I don't know anyone actually which is amazing because it's I think it affects a very like one out of eight women or it's a one very high yes, percentage. Well my yeah. mother did have a uh, breast cancer and it was okay. right before you know I was getting married that that she was diagnosed and but the thing is I know I'm complacent about it too because I feel like oh well it was because of hormone replacement therapy that's probably why mm. she got it so maybe I don't need to worry about it so you know I appreciate these kind of conversations because it does make me realize, like, I need to be much more, you know, active in my health care. And, you know, maybe I, I don't need to do anything preemptively like, you know, this brave woman did. But I do need to make sure I'm checking myself out, which, you know, I haven't been so you far. Know what, so Jasmine, I appreciate right. that. I appreciate what right. Sunita says because sometimes we make the decision or we say because I don't have health insurance. But I would right. encourage anyone out there, even if you don't have health insurance, there are mechanisms that you can go to the American Cancer Society, mm -hmm. the Susan G. Coleman Foundation, the National Cancer Institute. Don't make an excuse because you don't have insurance not to be aware. It is a right. disease that you they, have to be aware of. They will about. do them for free. Absolutely. And I know right. in, in the Valley, in, at Northridge Hospital, you right. can get free mammograms. And you can do them yourself Absolutely. at home. Yes. You, you know, self-breast you, exam. You have to be right. the first and foremost one that has to go and seek help. Don't wait. It's really important that you really get yourself but out Sandra, there. But Sandra, how do you how do you educate? Because I'm in a group of women, and right. we had 70-year-old women who have never had a mammogram. And they said it was because of lack of education. So we can right. say you have to, but what's the education piece? Well, you know, it's, it's interesting you say that because now there's an education program in the high schools, and they use a thing called the Betsy Breast. It's well, really, really important. We'll touch more on that after the break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. 
Stay with us. We'll be right back with more Every Way Woman. Welcome back. Every Way Woman is so excited to welcome Dr. Nimi Kapoor to the show. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. So we just want to take a few minutes to basically break down what it is that is this big, scary breast cancer. What is it? It's, it's, a, it's really scary when patients are confronted with it. It's like a whole new world has come all, all over. And, and the, so breast cancer is really just uncontrolled growth of cells. And it starts with changes in the DNA, and it starts within the breast tissue. The breast is made of lobules that make milk and ducts, which are the tubes that get the milk out to the nipple. So that's where breast cancer is, and it starts in the cells of those ducts and lobules. How does it... For lack, how does it happen? I mean, do you you contract it? Does it grow? Do you pick it up from out? I mean, what's what are the, the risk factors? Yeah, what are, yeah how does that, I know. And the symptoms, pa the patients actually. Patients are like, yes. how did this happen to me? Right. No one, right. Yeah. Right. No one in my me? family right. has mm -hmm. it. Why? Um, it's it's a combination of genetics and okay. environment. Mm -hmm. um, there's we don't know the, the 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 answer to everything, but we do know that. Breast cancer is just changes in, within the cells. It happens because of environmental stimuli, because of exogenous hormones, hormones that we ingest from foods, from hormone replacement. Um, it comes from uh, our own genes, our family history. So yeah, I want, to, uh, sorry, I just wanted to ask you a little bit about hormone, hormone replacement therapy because that's, my mom uh, got breast cancer and, you know, she was on hormone replacement therapy and same thing, she had no idea that she was going to get it. And so now, you know, I'm not as worried because I feel like, oh, well, it was through hormone replacement therapy. I don't have to worry. Do I have to worry? Well, you know, it's so common, mm -hmm. one in eight. Right. And a as we get older, our risk keeps increasing up to the age of 80. And while it's nice to say, oh, it must have just been the hormones, doesn't mean you're totally free from the risk. And hormone replacement, especially estrogen with progesterone, mm -hmm. over a long period of time, up 10 years of that kind of hormone replacement increases your risk. And I think also it really affects a lot of different women from different cultures, nationalities, everything across the board. It isn't just for one or another. It's, no, it it's, crosses it's, boundaries everywhere. Absolutely. And ages too. Absolutely. I mean, many younger women today are seeing more you know, of a problem with breast uh, cancer. Yeah, I have a question real yeah. quick. In going back to the hormone therapy, now, as someone who takes birth control, is that considered mm -hmm. a hormone supplement? Will that affect my, will that affect my risk factor of getting breast cancer? Um, prolonged hormones mm -hmm. will, will have an increased risk, um, especially um, w when you're you know, you have you when you go through men, men, menstruation early, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when you go through menopause late, when you don't have pregnancy early in age. So when you get pregnant, you kind of block those hormones that are your breasts are exposed to. So you have mm -hmm. a break, basically, from the Dr. hormone Ford, exposure. So all of that mm -hmm. goes into your mm -hmm. increased Dr. Ford, risk. Let me ask you a question. We're talking about hormone therapy, and we're using some really big words. But even before I get to there, what are some of the symptoms? What should yeah. I be telling my young daughters or my, the people around me to be looking for even before I get to there? What are some of the symptoms? Right. So this is important. Um, it's really important to know your breasts. And okay. you don't know symptoms unless you really know mm -hmm. what your breasts feel yeah. like, right. what normal breasts are. Everyone's breasts are different. All of our breasts are lumpy in one way or another. Sure. So if you find don't different sizes. Yeah. And I <laughs> that's exactly. 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 Especially if you find a lump, that doesn't always mean it's cancer. It is alarming and it is important to check it out. And you know, I think that's really important. Women should not be afraid. You know, no, you should definitely yeah. not be afraid. Thank right. you, doctor. We'll be right back after this. Stay with us. We'll be right back with more Every Way Woman. Welcome back. We've got Dr. Nimi Kapoor. Thank you so much for being here. And you're with Breastlink. Yes. Tell us a little bit about what that is. So I was so excited to find this, this group. Um, it's a multidisciplinary group, meaning we have radiology that are all specializing in breast cancer care and breast care, healthy breast care as well. We have medical oncology and we have surgery all under one roof. We all work together to make sure that each patient is treated comprehensively. They get everything all at once. 
What um, exactly does that mean? A patient gets everything all at once. Okay, that's are, important. Are you like on a conveyor belt where right. like <laughs> yeah. all yeah. diagnosis <laughs> on through your treatment, through it surgery, everything. It means that everything. we do screening. We right. check healthy, normal women. We okay. do exams with the surgeons. We, we do a, our own clinical exam given mm -hmm. by a doctor such as myself or Dr. John West. And then we, if we do end up finding cancer in someone, we do the treatment. We do the surgical mm -hmm. treatment. We do the medical treatment all together. Dr. John Link with us is, is one of our medical oncologists who's well known. And we are all work together to, to do this. That's such a relief wow. because yeah, so it's so stressful to have to go to one place for right. this treatment, one mm -hmm. place right. for this treatment. It's literally treatment. all and, under one roof. I so feel you like you didn't tell everything. someone the right information. You right. know, you're communicating. So is it kind of a joint effort that you're Absolutely. coming together? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Sometimes it feels so scary. Like, what if I didn't tell them, you know, that I, you know, you know, drink two glasses of wine a day or something like that. You <laughs> right. know, I'm just making that up. <laughs> I, I drink three. No, no just, yeah. but you know, just things like that where, are, you know, making sure that you're telling everyone the, the complete information about yourself and did you miss something? So right. your doctors are all on the same page. Yeah, and we're all, we're all, all specialized and focused on this. All of us have done extra research, mm -hmm. extra training, mm -hmm. and we come together as a group every week, actually, to discuss each cancer case so that we give a complete well-rounded opinion of what needs to be done. So is breastlink can also play where there's education? Can that, Absolutely. Can we, okay. I mean that was one thing that I found very different from bigger, um, more cumbersome academic centers. Mm -hmm. um, we do a lot of patient education and we spend a lot of time trying to teach patients about breast cancer awareness, breast health. Mm -hmm. right. And I think your, your organization really exams. personalizes it for that patient. You know, they give it a little bit more insight as to what they have to go through or what you know is going to be involved yeah, here. Yeah. And I think that's very comforting one, to a patient. One really nice thing that we do that I, I learned that we do is we have a volunteer who's a cancer survivor mm. matched to every cancer patient. Oh, that's great. That's so they great. actually together go through the process and right. so. That's really crucial. But is To talk scary to someone, someone who's been through it. You know that's right. really But is crucial. it also scary because you know I have an aunt who's currently going through breast cancer and you know she I just talked to her yesterday and she's like oh I'm getting my peach fuzz back on my hair and oh. I have a a few eyelashes that are coming back and I think in some ways yes it's it's important to you know kind of see the the progression right. of where you're gonna go but is it like too much information too fast for some patients well that we, we carefully match okay. volunteers mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. patients actually mm -hmm. yeah we don't want to scare patients but at the same time it's really important to embrace right. the knowledge and know and understand what's coming mm -hmm. what what I'm gonna feel like what to expect because when you when you're ready and prepared so much easier to fight a battle right. than it, if you don't It's know. really important to, to fight and not to yeah. sit back and be depressed about it. You've How got to stand up and fight for yourself. How do you coach a patient through that experience when right. you just diagnose someone yeah. with cancer? Mm -hmm. That must be one of the scariest moments of a person's life. Yeah. How do you guide a person through that experience? It's, it's still, for me, very emotional. Each patient's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Each patient has a different understanding and background where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. I call them on the phone before they come in to see me. I kind of go through some very basics of, of what, what to expect when they come in. Mm -hmm. I tell them to bring a friend. Good idea. Either, yeah. either yeah. A, Do uh, they know right there? Support. Oh, either oh, a so I'm going to go well. Yeah. Oh. A right. tape recorder if necessary, a Good. notebook. I mean, mm -hmm. I want them to be prepared. I want them to know that this is a long journey, but we're going to do this together. Mm -hmm. so Why a tape recorder? Sometimes they forget. To remember right. things. You know, when you're in a, you're There's in a haze. There's so much to divulge. You're tell, in a haze. So much to digest all at once. You but know? is it too much to tell someone over the phone initially? I know that you're like preparing them, but right. you know, you don't know where they're at in their house or mm -hmm. what happened that day. And it is, I mean, I think that's good because you're like forewarning them. But is it also tough? But at what not great being time there? do you tell somebody they have well, breast cancer? There's no right time. There's no right time. There is no right time. This is such a great conversation, ladies. I want to pick this up right after the break. We'll be right back. Stay with us. We'll be right back with more Everyway Woman. Welcome back to Everyway Woman. We're here with Dr. Kapoor from Breastlink Services. We just want to talk about treatment for breast cancer and some of the recent research in the year 2012 and how we've evolved. Absolutely. I mean, that's the good word to use, mm -hmm. evolved. I mean, mm -hmm. really, we're doing early detection. We're screening people much earlier, catching cancer much smaller. Mm -hmm. We're doing less big surgery, so much smaller surgery. And how can mm -hmm. we detect cancer even earlier now? 
as a patient, well, what can we do for this? Yeah, because I've wondered with, with mammograms, mm -hmm. you know, in, in some ways they tell you to have mammograms early, but mm -hmm. then there was a big controversy right. of there was, radiation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, there was, yeah. There was a big controversy. Right. We still firmly believe that at age 40 and yearly mm -hmm. are, is the way to go for screening okay. mammograms. So are mammograms always accurate? Always accurate. Oh, wow, that's a tough question. It depends on the density of the breasts, okay. actually. Patients with very dense breasts, it's harder to screen them. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one issue. Mm -hmm. If patients have implants, that becomes another okay. trickier right. issue. Mm -hmm. Patients who are very young will also have dense breasts, are harder to, harder to screen. So when you talk about treatment, what are the stages of of breast cancer and, and kind of the treatment that applies at each stage. That's that's important. You know, patients right. uh, want to know right away what's my stage. Right. But stage depends on a number of things mm -hmm. and uh, on, the, on the size of the cancer, on whether or not it's spread to the lymph nodes, okay. and whether it's spread even and beyond those lymph nodes in the rest of the body. What does it mean right. when a cancer spreads to the lymph node? It means um, it means that it's it's gone beyond just the breast, mm -hmm. and it's mm -hmm. it's a little bit more advanced stage. So it's not stage zero or stage one. You're getting into mm -hmm. stage two and possibly three even. Well, because mm -hmm. lymph nodes are, are also you know they they kind of are centralized in different regions, right. and so Throughout can your affect body. Right. 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 even more uh, mm -hmm. organs. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. But we have we have better treatments, and now we in some cases even when cancer spread to the lymph nodes, we mm -hmm. can just treat you with even less surgery now. Okay. Even what are alternatives to surgery? Alternatives to surgery, well when you have breast cancer we like to remove it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and that's done with surgery. A lot of the times we do treat with um, medications either chemotherapy or pills before surgery and try to shrink that cancer mm -hmm. and that's something that's really advanced. We, we, take, we partake in a lot of this research at Breastlink mm -hmm. and, and all over the country actually is mm -hmm. a very active research in understanding how we shrink tumors and so giving treatment before and watching the tumor shrink mm -hmm. gives us a lot of information. So do, does everyone have the same side effects? I mean would my side effect differ from chemo or treatment than Sandra's? Or very mm -hmm. different. Okay. Everybody's very different. What are some of the common side effects that you talk to patients about prior to them going in treatment and deciding what type of treatment they're sure, going to get? Sure, sure. Well, the pills that we give, like mm -hmm. tamoxifen and aromatase inhibitors, mm -hmm. those can have side effects that are similar to menopause, mm -hmm. like hot flashes. Those, okay. are, those are more common. Mm -hmm. Chemotherapy is, is one of those poisons that we all have heard about and know about. Right. Patients tend to lose their hair and get some nausea, mm -hmm. um, but every, again, everyone is different. But I, I think the thing you know that you're kind of bringing up with all the research and treatment that it's not necessarily a, a death sentence. And especially now, I mean, is oh, that Oh, definitely true? not. No. I mean, early breast cancer is is 99% cured in, right. in five years, so you don't see any and problems. And it's really crucial that women be taught early. I think, right. you know, early and take on charge to do self-exams, yeah. mm -hmm. be aware, and, and don't wait. That's don't so Can I ask exam. you an urban legend about breast cancer? Is it true that if you wear a bra, a bra all day, you'll get breast cancer? Absolutely not. Okay. No. <laughs> Amen. So take, it, take it off, keep it on. Where can we find more information on Breastlink? Um, well, breastlink.com. We have a, a full website with uh, all kinds of links to awareness. We have a, a nonprofit organization called beawarefoundation.org. Mm -hmm. That that gives you links on self-exam, on um, and then resources in the community mm -hmm. about where to go. And we'll have more information for you at everywaywoman.com. Stay tuned. Stay with us. We'll be right back with more Every Way Woman. Welcome back. Every Way Woman is honoring Breast Cancer Month. And with us is Alicia Crimian from the Fitness Station. Yep. She's a personal trainer and she has an extraordinary smoothie. It is called the Anti Breast Cancer Smoothie. smoothie right. I want some. Show us. Great. And the cool thing about it is it's only three ingredients. Wow. So, yeah. Okay, before you start, why is it called the Anti Breast Cancer Smoothie? Well, the reason why is because the ingredients we're using all have contents in them that help fight breast cancer or prevent them. So the first one we're going to start with is coconut water and okay. we're going to use young coconut which is this one Okay. and if you guys go to our YouTube channel you can actually learn how to cut it and open it yourself. Okay so at the end of the we're going to ask you where yeah. that channel is. But Let's what I did is I actually put some in a mason jar earlier on and we're going to pour some of it in our little Vitamix which is my favorite blender wow. ever. Let me see. Oh. Smells amazing, right? Oh my gosh. Smell great. Okay. And if you put a little bit of the coconut pulp in there okay. and you blend it, you have coconut milk. All so right. that's our first What's ingredient. What's next? 
And the coconut milk actually has lauric acid in it, mm -hmm. which is also present in human milk. Okay. And it has um, antimicrobial properties. All right. Which, and if you don't have regular, uh, or if you don't want to cut up a coconut, mm -hmm. you can always use a canned coconut. Okay. Milk also. Now the next thing you added are berries. Sure, let's put a little bit more than that. So we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna put about two to three cups of blueberries. Okay. And actually, it's mixed berries and they're frozen. All right. And, and then what's the final ingredient? And well, let's talk about these first. Okay. Um, these have um, elagic acid oh, okay. and they have um, laetrile, which these have uh, they have anti mutagenic effects and they also protect cell DNA damage. Okay. So, and all those beautiful colors, mm -hmm. those are flavonoids and they have, yeah, and they're full of antioxidants. Okay. You're giving me some great things, but I want us to get to the smoothie. I, I know. Want to okay. <laughs> so we're gonna add, um, what I have here is frozen banana and okay. this is just to add a little bit of sweetness. Okay. And it makes it creamy, like wow. adding cream to I'm it. I'm excited. Let's get to blending. I know. So this is the fun part. All we have to do is three ingredient mix. So, I won't talk while you're <laughs> So, let me ask you this. You were talking about some great ingredients. Can the viewers find those on the website about the antioxidants and all those things? Yeah. Um, all right. Good. Give me a minute. We're going to add a little bit more coconut water. Okay. So, the ingredients, they can find that on your website yeah. when you were talking about the antioxidants well, and all those pieces. Correct? Yes. Right. Um, so basically, we have uh, our website is fitnessstationla.com. Awesome. And if you want to find us on Instagram, we are, again, Fitness Station, mm -hmm. and we have motivational pictures and mm -hmm. recipes. <laughs> yeah. Go. Wow, that looks good. Isn't that like pretty? That's pretty. Okay, I'm ready to drink. Are you ready to taste this? Okay. Yes. So let's put this down. All right. And we have. Okay. That's we're gonna need. We need a, a little, little bit more, more coconut water. Okay. So, let's see. And we'll just use. All right. That's good. Perfect. Perfect. So. All right. You get your little, let's toast to all of the survivors <laughs> and all of the women. A little straw for you. All right. Get you some. Let's see. How's that taste? Ooh, yeah. Very licious, right? Excellent, excellent, excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Are you going to have a little? I will. Put your straw in with mine? I will. Okay. <laughs> we'll have a cute little. Okay, so where can our, again, where can our viewing audience find you? FitnessStationLA.com or on Instagram. For Fitness Station and also on Twitter, T Fitness Station. Okay. For those of you, this is our anti breast cancer smoothie. We'll be right back. Stay with us. We'll be right back with more Every Way Woman. Every Way Woman is so excited to welcome Selenia Logan from pinkpoleparties.org. Welcome. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. So tell us a little bit about what you do. You brought creative pole dancing. Yes, I am a fitness instructor, a pole dance fitness instructor, <laughs> and I've turned that into a fundraising uh, campaign for breast cancer. Now you have a friend that has breast cancer. Yes, I do. Now how is she doing? She's, uh, she's okay. She's doing all right. You know, she's still alive. She's still fighting. Now this, now she was your motivation to start teaching pole dancing. And Absolutely, one hundred percent. Yes, um, mm -hmm. I started creatively fundraising uh, using pole dance uh -huh. as a catalyst. So I teach my class and donate 100% of that money to breast oh, cancer. Oh, 100%? Yes. How long have you been doing so this fantastic. for? Thank you. Um, it's been three years, and it's been a slow little momentum, but it's picking up speed, and I'm super now, excited. Now, where do you teach this? It's in North Hollywood um, at Luscious Maven Dance Studio. Okay. Um, that's where I instruct, and that's where I hold my pink pole parties, and that's where I do all the fundraising. And so can anyone host a pole dance party? Well, I host the pole dance oh, party, the and you come. Okay. Well, we went to the studio in North Hollywood, California, and yes. we checked out a few of these moves. Let's break them down right okay. here. We'll teach these ladies at home. What you can do without a pole right yes. now. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so all we're going to do, we're going to put our hands on our hips. Okay. All right, you're going to kick it off to the right. 
Uh-huh. Kick it off to the left. Good job. And again to the right. Keep that hip up. We're going to take it down nice and slow okay. over that left leg. Uh -oh. This reminds That's me of that right. uh, back and <laughs> snap move. That's right. <laughs> Drawing the hands up. You're going to shift it over to the left. Uh -huh. Again, taking it nice. Down and oh, slow, uh -oh. and rolling it on up, this. and little body okay. rolls, body rolls, oh, body right. rolls, and take it into a little bit of circle right here. Hey, where's the DJ? Well, music, oh, please, hello. in the studio. I'm going to do a little chest movement. Wait, what? Oh, she can, she's got that. <laughs> she's got that down. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Bring a little extra entertainment to the pole. I love it. I love it. It all works. <laughs> With what we're doing. It's really great how you've kind of made pole dancing approachable. Yeah, you know, it's not just what you think about in your head at the strip clubs. You know, it's really about fitness, empowering yourself, getting stronger, mm -hmm. feeling sexy and sensual, and just kind of getting out of your own head, mm -hmm. right? And really exploring and having a good time. Now, at these mm -hmm. parties, what happens? Well, you make it rain or what No, no, no. <laughs> we have, uh, we have a, a beautiful setting where, you know, it's very dim lighting. Uh -huh. um, it's encouraging to the women to cut. It's for women only, okay. no men. Women only. Okay. okay. And we drink pink champagne, loosen oh, up a little fun. bit, have some strawberries. How much money do you raise doing something like that? Roughly around $5,000. So Is that $5,000 per party? Um, n well, it depends. You uh -huh. know, it's a fundraising effort, so it okay. really just depends mm -hmm. on, you know, how engaging the women are, um, how excited they are about the program mm -hmm. and wanting to support it. So it really just now, kind of Now, if you're not, you know, if you have a little, if you're a little luscious and maybe you don't want to wear strip, you know, yeah. strip Nobody clothes. Nobody wears strip clothes. You, okay. You, okay. No, no, no. <laughs> if you just wear yoga pants. You okay. can wear yoga pants. A Get little comfortable. Top. Yes. It's all okay. very, you know, you do a little bit of stretching and mm -hmm. yoga beforehand, so it's very... You know, Not getting your groove. Yeah. Back. yeah exactly. Okay. So, when and where can we find the next pink pole party? So, I'm <laughs> actually hosting 16 pink pole parties over the next few weeks. So oh wow! You'll be able to jump into one of these. It's going to start October 26th, the weekend of October 26th. So the 26th, 27th, 28th. Okay. That's a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And I'll be doing Friday, Saturday, and Sunday parties for the next four weeks after that. So, lots of opportunity to. Have a class. Enjoy yourself. You know, Amazing. And do you have any promotions out there that we should look for? I do. I'm uh, working with um, Living Social, and they're actually going to do an awesome oh, deal for me, perfect. and it's going to be great. So I'm looking forward to that. That's going to happen October 11th. They're going to start pushing that. A dealing diva yes. that likes to donate. <laughs> and what's and your, can you give us your website again? Yes, it's www.pinkpoleparty.org. Perfect. And get our groove on. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And we're on Facebook. You can find me on Facebook. What too. are you on Facebook? It's still pinkpoleparty.org on mm -hmm. Facebook. Perfect. So can we come to your next? I have Pink already extended party? you an invitation. I hope you do come. I would love that so much. It's going to be fantastic. You're going to love it. I will be there in my yoga pants. Yes. I'm expecting some pink <laughs> champagne. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, it helps a little bit. <laughs> and I'll bring my checkbook. For more information, check out everywaywoman.com. We'll be right back. This has been an Everyway Woman production.